a basal bolus regimen. The purpose of the insulin pump is to use one insulin, a mix of either intermediate acting insulin. My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist infectious disease pharmacist working for the NHS in the UK. We're going to be focusing on the endocrine system chapter from the perspective of the GPHC registration assessment. The GPHC registration assessment is an assessment that's required to be a registered pharmacist working in the UK. The endocrine system is a high rating chapter for the GPHC registration assessment. What this means is that high rating chapters make up 60 to 70% of the GPHC registration assessment. So it's particularly important for the registration assessment. We're going to be focusing on different aspects of the endocrine system chapter and we're going to look at it using the endocrine system study guide that's available on microfarm.org. So in particular, we're going to be focusing on insulin treatment for type 1 diabetes mellitus. The type 1 diabetes mellitus, what's important is the fact that patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus do not have the ability to produce insulin at all. They're completely dependent on insulin that they receive externally by administering it themselves. Generally, if a patient is administrating their own insulin, they will be doing it subcutaneously. That's in the subcutaneous tissue. The majority of insulins that are given in the UK are given subcut. There are some instances where you do use it intramuscularly or intravenously, and I'll speak about that. So the first thing to state is the fact that insulin treatment is required for everyone with type 1 diabetes mellitus. The other thing to focus on is the fact that there's several regimens that patients could be on. So, patients could be on multiple daily injections and this is using a basal bolus regimen. The basal is your background insulin that's required when patients are not eating and that's important for every patient regardless of whether or not they are consuming any carbohydrates. This is because of the fact that patients without diabetes always have a low level of production of insulin to maintain their blood glucose levels. So to mimic that, you're giving a background insulin to a patient, so a basal insulin. Basal insulins will be either an intermediate acting insulin, which is given twice a day, or a long acting insulin, generally given once a day and your bolus insulin, the bolus insulin will be a short acting insulin or a rapid acting insulin. Examples of these are insulin aspart, like Novo Rapid. You've then got mixed biphasic preparations and these are a mix of either intermediate acting insulin and also short acting insulin. An example of this is when you see patients on, let's say, Humalog Mix 25. This is a mix of a rapid acting insulin and an intermediate acting insulin and is given twice a day. And finally, you've got a continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion, which is an insulin pump. The purpose of the insulin pump is to use one insulin, that will be a rapid acting insulin, and the insulin pump will determine how much insulin is provided every hour. Then when you're going to consume some carbohydrates, so when you're going to eat, the insulin pump will deliver a bolus dose that you determine to ensure that you receive the correct amount of insulin for that meal. The insulin delivery with the insulin pump is subcutaneous, so it's via a cannula. So the main thing to learn from this is the fact that multiple daily basal bolus insulin regimens are really the first line option, the gold standard with type 1 diabetic patients. And the reason for this is the fact that this is really mimicking exactly how your body would be working. You've got background insulin and then you've got mealtime insulin. The point that's trying to be made here is the fact that it's so much better than using a biphasic insulin where there's a mixed biphasic insulin with long-acting insulin or intermediate-acting insulin and short-acting insulin. And the reason why you don't want patients to be on this is you are assuming that they are consuming the same amount of carbohydrates every day of the week, every month. And this is totally not true. People have different diets, they consume different amounts of carbohydrates every day. And the assumption that they need the same amount of insulin every day leads to really poor control of their diabetes mellitus. So when you're considering the basal insulin, in a basal bolus regimen. The gold standard is insulin decimir, which is brand name Levimir. 
to be given twice a day, every day. And this is because really the duration of action with insulin decimate is 20 to 24 hours. The amount of insulin decimate that you have in your system after 20 hours starts to decrease. That's why it's best to be splitting the dose and giving it twice a day. And that ensures that you have better 24 hour coverage. If a patient cannot take insulin decimate, this is where you offer insulin glargine, which is Lantus, and that will be taken as a once daily preparation. The duration of action of insulin glargine is better than insulin decimate, and that's why you can have it once a day and it provides a good 24 hour coverage. So the most important thing is now you need a rapid acting insulin, which will be acting as your bolus insulin. Another thing to take into consideration with rapid acting insulin is the fact that you really shouldn't be giving it after your meals, you should be giving it before your meals. So there used to be a practice that you could give rapid acting insulin after you've consumed your meal. There's not much evidence for this. This just leads to a very high postprandial glucose reading, that's your after food glucose reading, and that's why it can cause a lot of problems, meaning that you're unnecessarily causing your blood glucose levels to go higher than they should be. And then we conclude to the fact that if a multiple daily injection basal bolus regimen is not feasible for a patient, patient doesn't want to take five to six injections a day, then you can explore the twice daily mixed insulin. And this is your mixed biphasic insulin. So you've got a combination of intermediate acting insulin and rapid or short acting insulin alongside that. Again, problems with this is you'd expect patients to consume a similar amount of carbohydrates every day for them to get good control with this type of insulin. So this is where we conclude with the introduction of the endocrine system. If you found this video useful and you want me to do more of these videos, let me know in the comment section below. Another thing that I would say is the fact that there's an endocrine system crash course that's delivered by myself. The link for this is in the description box below where I go through three hours worth of content for the endocrine system to help prepare you for the GPAC registration assessment. It's a session that I've delivered to over a thousand trainee pharmacists so far and it's one that people find very useful. So if that's something that you may find useful, check it out in the comment section below. If you want to purchase the study guide that I've just been using, you can use the code MEMBER25 to get 25% off the Endocrine System study guide and it's available on www.microfarm.org forward slash shop. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.